the, when the guards' regiments overthrew Lena, Anna Leopoldovna and imprisoned the baby emperor, uh, they put forward their candidate, the daughter of Peter the Great, Elizabeth. She was 32 years old, and they told the Senate, this is going to be the new ruler. And so the Senate <laughs> agreed, and Elizabeth became Elizabeth Petrovna Empress. In her youth, she was um, God-fearing and very pious. As she grew into womanhood, she gave herself up to boys and booze. She was tall and blonde and very handsome. Uh, she put on weight as she got older. And she hadn't had a dreadful life, but there had been pressure. Think back about all these little changes of government that we talked about as she was growing up. There were times when it was a little bit scary, but nobody put her in prison and nobody threatened her life. So it had been just a matter of a certain uh, nervousness about the way things were going. Otherwise, her life wasn't bad. And she wanted to enjoy it now. She wanted to be free of all cares. So she was rather neglectful of business. She had reasonably good choice in administrators, showing some judgment there. But she liked to impress the foreigners. And she wanted, like her father, she wanted to impress them with the modernness and the up-to-date quality of her court, which meant spending lavishly and a big show of everything, everything. Uh, she did a lot of building projects. The Winter Palace, now strangely called the Hermitage, um, was a major project. It's the biggest palace in the world, by the way, stretching along the Nieva River there. And her architect was Bartolomeo Rastrelli, an Italian. She had several Italians in her payroll and some French architects and others. And they built the Peterhof, which is a beautiful palace and gardens, and they rebuilt uh, most of the structures at uh, Zarskoye Sewo, Instead of being little shacks and farmhouses and such for the getaway, now they were a bunch of little palaces. And Alexander Palace and others were all constructed or started during her reign. And the, these were the places where they held the court entertainments, vast entertainments, banquets and theater events and balls and mask balls. They were very popular. She frequently dressed as a man when she was young and svelte why she could carry it off and look quite impressive. I don't know that cross-dressing for men happened. I don't recall any. Uh, but I know a number of women did. They, it was, you know, Marlene Dietrich time or something. But uh, <laughs> it was effective. They had a lot of these things going on, very entertaining. But she had become, by the time her career was well underway as empress, a slave to her emotions. And she was totally without uh, sense or judgment about who she admitted to her bed. There were simply armies of men that marched in between her legs. <laughs> you know, whatever that means. Well, it meant, it meant that there were some unwanted pregnancies and venereal disease, uh, both of which were treated to the best of their abilities. Uh, uh, it didn't stop. Well, of course, that a little earlier in her life, when she was still a youngster, she was a candidate to marry the Bourbon king, Louis XV, who was 11 years old. She was 12. And they were hoping, the two countries were hoping that would happen. It didn't happen. But uh, nevertheless, she was uh, considered a virgin queen, just like Elizabeth I. <laughs> yeah, an official virgin. Uh, and, and she could cover the pregnancies as she became portly, that sort of covered it. But otherwise, if she had a mistake and brought it to term, and I think there were two or three maybe, the rest were aborted sensibly. But uh, these children were f placed in the country, a, a nice establishment and servants to take care of them. They were not, nothing terrible happened to them. Well, one I remember, I have to say one I do know some little bit about, and, it, of course, it's hard to know that if it's really fact or whether it's apocryphal, but the famous Princess Tarakanova, theoretically born to Elizabeth and then farmed out to some country house, 
grew up, and in the 1760s, which was the reign following Elizabeth, uh, people at court felt that she was going to be a figurehead for a, a, a coup d'etat to remove the empress of that time. And uh, so how to deal with her? She was a grown woman, Tarkanova was by then. And the story goes that uh, the uh, lover of the empress, uh, who was reigning, seduced Tarkanova and, and took her into his charge, and then she was arrested and placed in the Peter and Paul Fortress dungeon to keep her out of the way and eliminate her. And, uh, of course, in the springtime, the Nieva River floods. All rivers do. They go up, they flood. And when the flood time came, all the prisoners of the lower dungeons were moved to the upper areas to keep them out of the water. And, as I say, uh, rumor had it that uh, during the spring flood of 78 or whatever it was, uh, the, the order was to leave her where she was in the lower basement. And the flood came, and in the summer it went down, and what was left of her was found in the muck in the bottom of the building. So that was supposed to be the end of Princess Tarakanova, which is sort of miserable if you're the princess. So that was one way of getting rid of unwanted children, inconvenient births. Uh, she, had, uh, she made good use of her father's armies all these guards regiments, which had been her support and continued to be, uh, were the uh, forefront of her armies. And they expanded Russian territories on many fronts. She gained support for the crown by uh, giving more power to the great landowners. Now, Peter, her father, had done just the opposite. To diminish these boyars' control or any influence in his government, he suppressed them, kept them down. She did just the opposite and gave them a tax break. 